What's up everyone, in this video we're going to be enabling DLSS 4 with the latest profile or any profile of your choosing in all games. I say all games because it generally seems to work, however your mileage is going to vary with specific games. So just keep that in mind. I've gone ahead and blown everything up to 150%. I got some feedback about that in the past, so hopefully this is easier to read for people on lower resolution displays. This version is going to be really similar to my last video, but it's simplified thanks to an update to NVIDIA Inspector, as well as some things that people figured out in the comments. Today I'm going to be using version 2.4.0.9 of NVIDIA Inspector. I'm going to link it in the description. If, th if you're watching this in the future and the version is different, things may be a little bit different in the app, but it generally retains the same functionality. So here we are in NVIDIA Profile Inspector. You'll notice on the top left it says Global Driver Profile, which means we are affecting the global profile. Everything we're doing is on a global driver level. If you want to create a profile for a specific game that's not listed on this drop down menu, you can click on the sun icon at the top, create new profile, name it whatever you want for the game, click on OK, click on this window with the plus sign icon to the right of it, and then you'll be able to select the game's exe that you want to modify. Since we're changing things on the driver level, you really shouldn't have any issues with games that have anti-cheat. It's the same as updating your driver or changing your driver version. You're just changing things within the driver, not within the actual game or the game's files. But always keep in mind that there's a risk involved. For instance, if you are running Profile Inspector and you don't close it before you, you run a game with anti-cheat, you're going to run into some issues as I just learned with the finals. I hadn't closed this program out and the vinyl said, hey, you're running NVIDIA Profile Inspector, we don't like that. And I had to close the game, close Inspector and then run the game again. And I've had no problem since. So the settings we are looking to change are in section five. So let's scroll down to section five here under common. You want to change DLSS enable DLL override to on. Force preset letter. This is where you can always force the latest preset. The latest preset as of this video is preset K. I know some people prefer preset J. So here's where you can change that very easily again on a global level or per game. If you edit a new profile, I'm going to go ahead and choose always use latest. And again, you can choose one of these older presets as well. If you find that they work better for you for any reason, you can go back to the, one of the older presets. J and K are the new DLSS 4 transformer model. I'm going to always use the latest here. DLSS force quality level. I'm not going to touch this because games usually have these presets built in. Some games don't. So if you have a game that doesn't have a specific preset that you like, go ahead and force this. But I'm going to leave this on default for now. For scaling ratio, I'm not going to touch either. This is if you really want to fine tune the render resolution of DLSS. You can do that. I don't have any issues with this, so I'm going to leave it. Below here, you'll notice that instead of just DLSS, we're in FG, which is frame generation. So you can force the latest preset for frame generation as well if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this. This is optional. We've already changed the regular DLSS preset to the latest. So if you don't care to force the latest frame generation preset, you can go ahead and skip this part. The force preset letter for DLSS frame generation currently only allows you to change it to always use latest. If you know the hex codes on the right here, you can go ahead and change it, but I don't know them offhand. So I'm just going to use the latest, which is what I want to use anyway. I would not touch this <laughs> unless you're on a 50 series GPU. I'm on a 4090 and I changed this and it caused some problems. I thought, hey, maybe we could squeak it out on a driver level, but it didn't seem to work for me. So 2x is the most you could do on a 40 series. So now we're in DLSS RR territory. So if you want to force the latest version of Ray Reconstruction, you can go ahead and enable this as well. And for the preset letter, again, I'm going to go with always use the latest. Some of these may be unused for specific things. So just keep that in mind and take a look at what it says. And again, the force quality level, I'm going to leave it alone and everything else we can leave alone. Now we have enabled the latest version of DLSS here with the latest preset the latest version of frame generation here with the latest preset and the latest version of ray reconstruction here. You want to apply those changes on the top right. But before I do so, I'm going to run Tokyo Extreme Racer, which is running DLSS version 3.7.10. So on the bottom right there, and if it's not visible, I'm going to go ahead and blow it up on the screen. It is running preset F, which is an older version of uh, DLSS. It says uh, DLSS v3.7.10. Like I mentioned, that's the DLL file that the game currently has in its folder. And it's running render preset F, which was the latest for that version of DLSS. So that's the way the game comes. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. So I've applied it on a global level. I'm going to close out of inspector here. 
Again, always close that, especially if you're playing a game with anti-cheat. Close the specter before you run the game and you should be okay. So now, as you can see on the bottom left, we are running preset K, and that's without any DLSS file swaps. In my last video, I said you should use DLSS Swapper to swap DLSS files. It doesn't seem like you need to, so thanks to everyone in the comments that said you don't need to do that. It does still say DLSS V3. That's normal, but it is running V3 10.2.1, which is DLSS 4 with the latest preset of K. Now, like I mentioned earlier, your mileage is going to vary with which games this works with. It's going to work for most games, but I found some to be an issue and that can have something to do with NVIDIA's app. People are saying you should completely remove the NVIDIA's app and this will work better. I haven't done that yet because I do use it for recording sometimes. So I haven't got rid of the app yet. If you'd like to enable that DLSS overlay to make sure everything's working properly, go ahead and open your registry editor, navigate to the directory here. Once you're in that directory, right click anywhere in the blank space, go to new and create a new D word value. Name it show DLSS indicator, like so. Right click on that, modify it, click on decimal and change the value to 1024. That's gonna enable DLSS overlay. If you want to disable it, you need to delete this. It's kind of annoying, and if there's a way to do it in Inspector, please let me know. There is another app named DLSS Tweaks that will allow you to enable and disable it. However, I'd rather not have two different apps accessing my drivers, which is why I'm doing it this way. So that's pretty much all you need to do to enable DLSS 4 on a driver level with the preset of your choice. I didn't include the DLSS swapper portion in this video because it doesn't seem to be necessary, but for any games that may give you an issue, check out the other video I did that I'll link in the description as well, where I show how to use DLSS swapper to swap DLSS files and games. Of course, you can always do that manually as well if you prefer, but it really shouldn't be necessary for most games. Once again, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for engaging in discussion in the last video. I help you guys out, you help me out, and that's what's great about YouTube. We made this a little bit more easy in this one, and hopefully one day NVIDIA gets their app together and we'll be able to do this all through the app natively. Until then, we've got these workarounds, and that's it. If you've got any questions, let me know. I try to respond to every single question, but you know, sometimes I get a little busy, so it may take a while. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace.